So what are the effective treatments for hair transplant? Hair transplant, on the other hand, is a surgery. We take hair from where you have it hmm. and put it where you don't have it. Okay, so it overall takes nine months to for, a year. For you to, 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 to see a good result. So if, you, a, result. if you have a function or a event plan hmm. in the next year or so, hmm. it is better to be careful. Right. See, when you said rhinoplasty, the first thing is that not just women, men are vain too. Right, true. They want their yeah. rhinoplasty done, they are not happy with the way the nose looks right. and so they decide to get a rhinoplasty done. So do you have um, customers who walk in with a reference image and you say this cannot be done for you? Yes, uh, lots of times. Okay. You will be hospitalized for about 2-3 days, mm -hmm. your downtime is about 3 weeks. Okay. And wound healing takes about uh, 7-10 to 10 days, mm -hmm. so you need to plan your downtime as far as an abdominoplasty or a tummy tuck is right. concerned. And a complete healing will take how long? About three months. Hi everyone, I am Pallavi. I am a lifestyle and corporate influencer. And I have with me Dr. Srikant V, who is the consultant, plastic reconstructive and cosmetic surgery. Hi doctor, thank Hello. you for joining me. Um, we have a very interesting topic today that is um, on plastic surgery and hair transplant. My first question for you is about hair transplant. So what are the effective treatments for hair transplant that uh, you know helps in the residing hairline or the significant ball patterns in men? Yeah. See, first of all, hair transplant is a surgery. Mm -hmm. There are many medical options available. So medical options basically are using oral medication, maybe something lotions to apply, some medicated lotions to apply and that will control hair fall for some time of life. Mm -hmm. Problem with that is you may have to use it for a very long time or a long uh, throughout your life. With that, you need to be very determined. Hair transplant on the other hand is a surgery. We take hair from where you have it mm -hmm. and put it where you don't have it. For example, between the years, almost everybody has got dense hair. Mm -hmm. We take a lot of the hair there and put it either in the front, in the sides or some people who bald in the pit and it works very well. So the hair follicles are The grafted hair follicles there. are grafted there, hmm. they grow there, they grey there, they become long, you can braid it, you can tie it into a ponytail hmm. and you can treat it the way you want to. It takes about probably 6 to 8 months for you to see a good result hmm. and once 8-9 months are over, the hair is lost. And how much time it takes for the surgery? Yeah, the hair transplant is a simple surgery but a very long surgery. It can take up to 8 to 10 hours for a session oh. because there are multiple individual acts. One is to harvest the graft, oh. second is to separate and prepare the graft and then to implant the graft. Oh. So it is a long process but it is simple. It is done under local anesthesia. You are allowed to have a coffee break, you are allowed a bio break in between if you want to stretch your legs. Oh. really perfectly all right oh. so you're not very stressed out but the thing is it takes the entire day for you to get a hair transplant right. done so the patient is awake because it's a local yes. he's awake in the morning even he typically when he comes in he comes has after a light breakfast then there's a mid-morning snack which you can share with us then there's okay. a lunch break evening you have a tea break and if you want a bio break in between you're most welcome to do that and in between if your family friends are there you can go have a chat with them, you know, so that just to break the monotony of it. Right, right. And uh, does it require two sessions or can it be done in one day, depending on probably the... Depending on the number of, of hair the, grafts, right, yeah. I would split it up into two sessions, that is day one and day two, that okay. is the right half and the left half, okay. for very many reasons. Okay. One is safety, second is fatigue, okay. both the patient fatigue and the team fatigue, the team of hair transplant surgeons okay. doing it. Okay. And for to not to prevent you know excessive dosage of uh, drugs like local anesthesia, so that it becomes very very safe. Right. And for men who have a lot of hair loss, so do you you know suggest them to come for this treatment? And uh, what are the risks associated for those? See, the people who have a lot of hair loss should have modest expectations mm. because we transplant the most successful hair transplants are the ones that come from the scalp. Right. The next donor area is the beard and very rarely people who are hairy, you can do what is called as a body hair transplant. Oh. But all of it put together, if you have very less donor site on the scalp, I think your expectation should be modest oh. and you should change your hairstyle accordingly. That is, even though you have sparse hair, you should try to make it look more full oh. in the sense that dark hair looks better, white hair looks more flat. So oh. take a little bit of care and take some kind of advice in styling and then you can look like having a decent amount of hair. Wow. 
and what about the recovery time how much time it takes to recover and exactly after the surgery i'm sure they have to take a lot of care while sleeping and all those activities that is only for about 48 hours okay initially the patient after the procedure is over there will be a small dressing on the head mm -hmm. which comes out at 48 hours okay after 48 hours he is allowed to shampoo the donor side that is the back of the head Got it. after a month after a week you should shampoo the top of the head oh. and then it's a waiting game you wait for the original transplanted hair to fall off when you hair to grow oh. in in that period you will have to use certain medications okay and after about 8 9 months even that is not required okay are there any uh, prominent side effects that you can Yes. See, a hair transplant, we have to respect it like a surgery. Mm. So, what are the things that can go wrong in surgery? Infection. Mm. So, you make sure that the OT is clean, it is sterilized. We do it at Manipal Hospital in our OT, which is as good and as sterile as a neurosurgery or a orthopedic surgery or a cardiac surgery mm. uh, OT, so that mm. it is free of infection. Right. Next thing is the drug overdose or the drug allergic reactions. Mm. I would suggest all patients or people who are getting hair transplant. get a uh, allergy test of your uh, drug done so that you don't have a reaction during the hair transplant right. then the other complications really are very very hmm. rare and if your other parts of your uh, health are taken care of the blood pressure the diabetes the asthma if that is taken care of it's a very safe procedure So it overall takes nine months to for, a year for you to 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 see a good result. So if you if you have a function or a event plan hmm. in the next year or so, hmm. it is better to be careful. Right, got it. So I think the next topic we will discuss is rhinoplasty, which is a very common procedure. Yes. Many women are doing it not only for the functional change but also for the aesthetics, uh, how it looks. Right. So what are the different uh, surgeries that you yeah, have? Yeah. See, when you said rhinoplasty, the first thing is that not just women, men are vain. Right, too. true. They want their yeah. rhinoplasty done. They are not happy with the way the nose looks, right. and so they decide to get a rhinoplasty done. Oh. Rhinoplasty basically will change the shape of the nose, and if you look at the dynamics of a face, oh. the nose is the most prominent part of the true. face. It's in the so center. In the center, yeah. it takes away all the attention. So, good-looking nose makes it a more attractive yeah. face. The thing we would look into the nose is to see if it is proportionate, mm. symmetrical, mm. whether it balances with your cheekbones, your chin, your forehead. Whether it has a hump. Whether it has a hump. Yeah. Whether it is depressed. Whether mm. it is white. Whether it is narrow. Mm. Whether the skin is thick. Whether mm. the skin is thin. Mm. All these things matter when you are thinking of getting a rhinoplasty done. Mm. The main thing about a rhinoplasty mm. is that you should be very clear what you want. Mm. Because rhinoplasty is like mathematics. Right. Two plus two adds to four. If you're very clear, these are the procedures that I want. Your plastic surgeon will tell you whether yes, it is possible. So there's the end result. The end result. So you'll be happy with your result. So do you have um, customers who walk in with a reference image and you say this cannot be done for you? Yes, uh, lots of times. Okay. So there are people who come and ask me that I want a, a nose like an actress, hmm. uh, X Y Z actress, hmm. and then I tell them no, it does not. First. You It might not suit, suit you, you. Right. and second thing, I think you got unrealistic expectations. Mm. If you have unrealistic expectations, I think it is better to educate yourself, meet maybe one or two or three more doctors who will give you different opinions, yeah. and then go in for your surgery because it is not. If you go in with unrealistic expectations, you will be unhappy, hmm. and then that is going to spoil the entire result of your uh, right, surgery. Right. And what is the difference between open and closed rhinoplasty yeah. surgery? Yeah, there are, basically there are two different techniques. Hmm. Okay, a closed rhinoplasty, all the surgical approach, the sutures, everything is inside the nose nostril, hmm. so nobody is going to see it. Okay. In an open tip, what we do is to take a small incision along this narrow part of the nose, which we call the columella. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Most people cannot uh, see the columella, and a scar on the columella is nearly invisible. Right. There is lots of advantages with the open tip versus yeah. the closed. And closed tip has got its own advantages. Yeah. Obvious thing being scar, and second thing is nobody can see what it has yeah. done. And open tip gives an approach yeah. which the entire structure of the nose, which yeah. is the cartilage, the bones, you can see them better. Okay. And once you see them better, you shape them better, so the final results are. More predictable with the open tip. Okay. However, it depends on what your surgeon prefers. Also, because okay. some of, not everybody is skilled in everything. Okay. And by and large, you can ask your surgeon, uh, right. plastic surgeon. I would prefer a closed tip versus an open tip. He'll tell you if you're the candidate for that. Right. And so that's how it is. So you should be able to ask for what you want. If you're okay. very particular, I don't want anything on done on the outside. Tell your surgeon, please do an uh, 
endonasal approach which will cover all the scars so other than the aesthetic approach for the functional thing like a deviated septum or something right yes. so how do you take care of that See, that's also a similar procedure it, it, no that is a final a deviated septum is basically it's a surgery on a different part of the nose hmm. where the septum that separates the right and the left nostrils hmm. allows air passage allows us to breathe allows us to smell hmm. if it is bent then it causes problems one is breathing difficulty hmm. second is repeated sinusitis hmm. then headaches hmm. all these problems come with the deviated septum it's also a requirement in like army yes. and air force if yes. you have a deviated, deviated septum, septum you will not, not be able. yeah you have to get the surgery so, done before that. so deviated septum it straightens the septum hmm. and As is it also rhinoplasty it is not rhinoplasty okay. but you can combine it to the rhinoplasty where it is called as a septo rhinoplasty oh wow okay so uh deviated septum also will have other things like the turbinate hypertrophy which needs to be addressed in the case that you want to have a nice uh, smooth comfortable breathing Got it. and how long is this procedure it but is done under general it anesthesia is, uh, right okay most of rhinoplasties are done under general anesthesia sure. except for the very fine and you know, very small things like a ilar base correction or something sure. uh both your surgeon is comfortable you are comfortable so sure. it's preferred to be done under general anesthesia okay and uh, for uh rhinoplasty if you have to stay in the hospital for a day sure. i think that would be ideal and what is the post operative uh, take care that you have to do for yourself and how long it will take to heal a uh, rhinoplasty typically takes about 2 uh, days for the dressing inside the nose to come out okay and any rhinoplasty that there will be some swelling on the nose which oh. lasts for about 3 weeks oh. and you can see the final result by about 3 months oh. from a rhinoplasty so a recovery period from a rhinoplasty from a medical point of view would be Two to seven days, hmm. and from a aesthetic point of view, I would like say about three months for a social event or something. That you can months. go out in ten fifteen days. Okay. But when you look at your nose, you know that you know you feel so, this is so. So you have to mold it. There is a molding required. Why the time? Uh, the because typically what happens is all the surgery on the nose is on the cartilage right. and the bone. Hmm. We don't touch the skin. Okay. We have to give the skin to time, time, to, time to, shrink to shrink or to expand over the new structure. Got it. And that takes about three months. And you have to be very careful around that area. Does it become weaker? if you had a what you call as osteotomy that is a procedure to narrow the nose hmm. where you cut the bone hmm. then you have to be careful for about 2 months don't carry any small children with who don't have right. head control right. don't get into contact sports like kickboxing right. or uh, anywhere where you can hit your nose because the hmm. nose will then deviate got it. so it takes uh, overall 3 months, three months to completely heal so the next topic we have is about tummy Uh, that is, I think, under the mummy makeover. That it's yeah. very popular these yes. days, right? So, what is it? Is it a procedure? It's a surgery, right? It's yes. A okay. tummy tuck is also in a medical term. We call it abdominoplasty. Hmm. That means you remold the abdomen. Hmm. It is very common because a lot of women after uh, pregnancy, hmm. especially uh, two pregnancies, or if they have a baby which is much bigger than their uh, body weight, hmm. uh, body can withstand. the skin doesn't shrink the muscles become weak hmm. and you tend to have a protruding belly you are not happy because you know you have a small apron of fat and skin which is hanging down and you never look like the way you did before pregnancy so that, that's where the tummy tuck comes in hmm. what we do in a tummy tuck is to repair the muscles take away the excess fat and skin hmm. add a bit of liposuction so that you get a nice uh, curve curve and waistline hmm. and try to restore your look as you were before the pregnancy so will there be a noticeable mark for the surgery yes there will always be a mark in a abdominoplasty mm -hmm. it's if uh, like a cesarean section mm -hmm. but about three times the length mm -hmm. so it goes from hip bone to hip bone we put it do what is called as a bikini incision mm -hmm. so that even if you wear a bikini a revealing bikini you will not be able to see the incision mm -hmm. so suppose if somebody is uh, planning for a pregnancy after the surgery does it impact they yeah, most definitely it will okay my advice to them will be finish your family hmm. be clear and then get your surgery done the skin has to stretch it might skin will stretch again right. and now you already have shortened the skin so right. we don't know in what how will it how expand? it will expand and how it will contract because in a normal person itself our knowledge is little limited as far as this skin changes go hmm. so in a post abdominoplasty you are probably wasted time and effort if right. you get pregnant right. so right. it's better to plan and then get it done and what are the criteria for somebody to be eligible for this tummy tuck surgery the uh, First and foremost is make sure that you have completed your family, family plan, yeah. and second thing is finish. Make sure you have had lactation uh, is over, your child is all right, and 
third thing is be clear what you want to get it done mm. because a lot of the surgeries are invasive some of them will take a longer down time like any unlike any other plastic surgery procedure you will be hospitalized for about 2 3 days mm. your down time is about 3 weeks okay and wound healing takes about 7 uh, to 10 days mm. so you need to plan your down time as far as an abdominal plasty or a tummy tuck is right. concerned and a complete healing will take how long about 3 months and the surgery in itself takes the surgery takes about 4 hours okay. it takes about 4 hours under anesthesia this can be done under epidural anesthesia hmm. or general anesthesia depending on your comfort level and the comfort level of your anesthetist hmm. the advantage of epidural anesthesia is you are awake hmm. but there is a lot of people who say no doctor knock me off to sleep i don't want to know anything because right they might be yeah. intimidating for anybody so so is it a possible that somebody again gains fat and again the skin has like even they are not planning hmm. for a child but they are again regaining weight and again the body will go back to how it was earlier it will because whatever calculations and measurements that we do before surgery is real time is That's for right. you plus or minus 10% okay it is supposing somebody is weighing 60 kilos hmm. from 54 to 66 this tummy tuck will last you okay but if you lose more weight there is a chance your skin will sag if you put on more weight there is a chance that it will protrude so, so sh- should they come to you uh, i mean the doctor after this tummy tuck is done to check Like in four months, five months, What something. What I advise everybody, uh, no, uh, not after three months. No, okay. I, I medically we don't need to see them. Okay. But what I tell them is try to maintain your body weight. Hmm. Give them strict diet instructions. Give them exercise instructions. Hmm. And can they work out? That's the most yeah. important thing. Three weeks. Question. Three weeks. They can. They can. They can do everything, including yoga, the most difficult of uh, asanas. Training? Yes. Okay. Weight training definitely after three weeks. Hmm. Because, and I advise everybody that you know get into a regular exercise program. Hmm. Have the determination mm. and put in some time because having done such thing something like a tummy tuck it's good for you to maintain for the next 15 20 years mm. so make some time for yourself yeah, at least about 5 days a week mm. 45 minutes a day make sure right. that you're going to work out so thank you so much doctor so thank we have you. many questions that we wanted to discuss with you but to be brief we just picked up three do you want to tell the viewers about what manipal hospital has launched today specifically yeah. about the yeah. hospital and plastic surgery yeah. See the thing today, Manipal Hospital we have done is we have launched an aesthetic clinic. Now this aesthetic clinic is purely dedicated for patients who would like to undergo cosmetic surgery. We offer uh, the entire gamut of cosmetic surgery that is done, right from hair transplant for men to facelifts to tummy tucks to minimally invasive thread lifts, uh, liposuction, lipofills, anything that needs to be done for a patient who is requiring cosmetic surgery. We have got, uh, we have got it. We have got a dedicated operation theater, a dedicated consultation room, and all the equipment and the most advanced technology that is required, whether it be a rhinoplasty or a liposuction, at Manipal Hospitals, we have it here. And if you do feel that you would like to get it done, you are most welcome to come and utilize the services. Right. Thank you so much, Doctor. And this is available at Old Airport Road. Old Airport Road. Airport Road.